Hi, you're watching brightaccess.com. My name is Alex Boye, and we're here at the beautiful woods on Knife. <laughs> Hello, and I'm Sarah Parker with Utah Central Credit Union. Welcome to a new series of episodes to help you plan the most wonderful wedding. On today's show, we have ideas and tips from the best wedding professionals to help you with your wedding. Now, on today's show, we'll look at invitations, photography, and how to get into physical shape. We will feature a wedding from Southern Utah. We'll also discuss a unique floral idea. So sit back, relax, and help us let you plan your wedding. You're watching BrideAccess.com. I'm Mary Crafts with Culinary Crafts, and thanks to Bright Access for having me come today and share with you a few of the things that I've learned along the way. Oftentimes we get questions from brides, do I do a plated meal or a buffet dinner? It depends on what you're planning. A plated meal is one of the most formal things that you can do for your wedding. It's very gracious, service is beautiful, preset chinas, the waiters coming and plating down, it's a truly formal, elegant way to do a dinner. However, if you want more of social interaction and people moving around, then I totally recommend that we go with the buffet. It gets people up off their tables moving around and you can offer a larger variety of things on the buffet so they can have a selection of what they'd want to have uh, rather than just what's placed before them. Now in terms of cost, there's also a difference in cost. The formal plated dinner is probably the most expensive thing that we do at Culinary Crafts. So it's a little bit more expensive because of all the number of waiters that have to be there for you, the on-site chefs. And then we have extra china service involved, extra flatware. So it's also a little bit more affordable to have a buffet. Uh, then we can not use quite as much place settings, not quite as many staff, and yet you still can serve a full-on dinner. So the question of whether you should do plated or whether you should do buffet really depends on what you're trying to create in your wedding. When brides come in, that's the first thing I say to them. Now, I know you've come to talk about food today, but we're going to talk about a lot of other things. First, I want to hear about your timeline, what you're planning for your event, the vision you have, the feel you want, the atmosphere that you have in mind. I want to talk about your colors, your style, and just learn as much about you as I can. Then into that framework, we're going to put food. I can't begin to design a wedding without first getting to know you. I invite you to get to know Culinary Crafts first on our website at culinarycrafts.com and schedule an appointment to come and talk with myself or one of our senior planners. We've been creating wedding dreams for 26 years and making them a reality. Please join us. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Michael Nelson with RememberWhenFilms.com. My expert wedding tip today is helping you avoid a bride's number two regret, which is that she didn't videotape her wedding party formals. These are the most important people to you that you've honored with a title and perhaps spent money on with a dress or a tux or a flower. And this is that very special time where you get them all together and you organize beautiful scenes. This is where we get the shot of the bride and the maid of honor, the bride and her bridesmaids, the bride and her parents. It's the only time these scenes can be organized. Very often brides feel they don't need to videotape this because they're having photographs taken. But photographs are a frozen moment in time. Video captures the real feeling and emotion. We all have that frozen cheese grin that we hold for a photograph that looks so good for photography and not so great on video. But it's this little moment in time before that or after that where the bride gives her maid of honor a real hug and it's emotional with a laughter or a, or a little bit of tears. We capture that real feeling and that real emotion and these are after all the most important people to you. So capturing them is very, very important. We 
We get the most wonderful footage of little children during the formals. You don't want to miss these scenes for anything in the world. So avoid the number two regret of brides and videotape your formals. The number one problem we see with weddings is related to that, and that is that the formals start late. And then that collides with the reception, causing your reception to be late all evening. It's very easy to avoid. Unfortunately, the solution requires a little bit of deception. You have to lie to everyone in the wedding party and tell them to be there 15 or 30 minutes earlier. In my humble opinion, it's okay for everyone else to wait for you on your wedding day, but it's not okay for you to be waiting for them. So if you can just get them there a little early, everything will start on time, your formals will flow well, and then the reception will start on time and it will flow well. We want you to have the best day possible. If you have a great day with a wonderful experience, that shows on the video, and we get a great video. Tell me how it's been. He says he's seen her face a thousand times before. The love was so innocent, the love was so pure. But that was only in his dreams. That was only. Now he hasn't been so happy since the day that he was born Because he'll see her face a thousand times or more At least a thousand times or more At least a thousand times or more The flowers that you have at your wedding set the whole tone and mood of the event. Let's go now to Amy at the Flower Patch for another great floral tip. Thanks Sarah and Alex. Welcome brides. Today we're going to talk about what type of bride you are and what that means about the bouquet that you should choose. So what type of bride are you? There are, are six different types of brides. There's the traditional bride. Now she enjoys simple elegance and not too much extravagance. There's the romantic bride. She's the ultimate storybook bride. She's the princess. There's the modern bride. She's the trendsetter. The natural bride, her wedding would be outdoors and have lots of outdoors type of things at her wedding. Then there's the playful bride. She's passionate about life. She'd have lots of fun color at her wedding. The classic bride, timeless beauty. She would have lots of different classic flowers, the gardenia, the stephanotis, and the rose. So, where does what type of bride that you are come from? Well, it comes from your personal style and from the style and mood that you want to add to your wedding for choosing the bouquet style, the most important part. The most popular is the handheld. This bouquet is more uniform in shape and is round, and its stems are wrapped now, for a more glamorous look, you can add things to your bouquet. You can add the sparkly bling, you can add jewels, you can add a brooch to the stems. Any of these things will spice up your bouquet. This is one type of bouquet, the round bouquet. Then, there is the cascading bouquet, and it has kind of a round shape here at the top and then cascades down. Now, this has beads hanging from it, which is another accent you could add to your bouquet. The other type of bouquet is the hand tied. This one, it's not so uniform in shape like this one. It would be more like your hand-picked look. How about the size of your bouquet? How big should your bouquet be? The size of your bouquet is determined by your body size, your wedding dress, and the look that you are hoping to portray. Your bouquet is the centerpiece of all else. From here, you can figure out your boutonnieres, your corsages, your bridesmaids, and your centerpieces. So have fun with this part and make it your own. Thanks, brides. I'm Amy with The Flower Patch, and you're watching BrideAccess.com.
want to thank Russ Broadhead from Castle Bridge Films for bringing us this week's featured Southern Utah wedding. In this economy, did you know that the average wedding still costs $28,000 wow. nationally? Wow. That's a lot of dough. Uh, we have Robin Seville here from the Utah Coalition on Marriage and BrideAccess.com right. to tell us how you can have that dream wedding and not spend that much money. $28,000 is a lot of money, isn't it's it? It's a lot of money. Well, I that, can't believe that's the average. And that, that's, like you said, Nisha, that's nationally. In Utah, it's, it's closer to ten dollars to $12,000. still a lot of money. Sti still a lot of money. Some of the thing, couple things that make it probably a little bit cheaper in Utah is often people are having it in, in a church or in an LDS temple. No charge to be there. Right. Uh, often they don't serve alcohol either at that wedding and, and reception. And that jacks up the price and, as well. And alcohol would jack it up quite a bit as well. But still, ten dollars to $12,000, that's a big, well, big hit. And what's tough is when you start that way, spending that kind of money sometimes you're in the hole and money already is a tough issue uh, well, in marriage it's an emotional event it's a very important event especially for the bride usually we don't want the couple to start off insolvent we want them to come back from the honeymoon and not be wondering how they're going to pay the bills or how the parents are going to pay the bills if if they're the ones that actually pay for the wedding number one is flat out don't overspend don't overspend. <laughs> That's your first tip. Make, make a budget. You know, you, you should be budgeting for a lot of things in life, in school, for a house, for a car, whatever it is. With a wedding, do the same thing. Decide well, you can what go to is. your people saying, it, yep. it's the cake person. I can yeah. spend this much. What can yeah. you do for me? You the know, flowers. That's what we did. Exactly. Make a list of, of the top ten things that are most important to you. Maybe the dress, the cake, what, whatever that may be. It would be the cake, and, Robin, and, and, for sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he knows. He's like, the cake, the cake. Well, the cake I'm like, the good. dress, that's all right, yeah, but yeah, the cake, yeah. yeah. So whatever that is, whatever those top things are for you, then decide what your budget is and allocate the funds for that. You can go, for example, you can go to Bright Access. We have a budget planner that helps you decide where you're going to put, the, put those funds. But, you know, a lot of things, too, is do you have to have 500 people at your wedding? I swear yeah, that's such a Utah wedding, though. You have to have the whole board, yeah. everyone that you've yeah. ever met, on and they're all sides. coming on both on, sides. On both so sides. we had 78 people. Yeah. Oh, that's it? Good and it you. cut down our cost hugely. And it will cut down we the cost had 500. significantly. Yeah, exactly, because mm -hmm. you feel some... 500 people at your five, wedding? I had 500 because, wow. you know, here's my dad who's a professor at BYU and we've lived in Orem for how, you know, they've right. lived there 25 mm -hmm. years. I mean, you invite the town. But how many people, Nisha, did you know out of that 500? Like 479. Yeah, no, I didn't. That, 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 that's, that, that's the point. You know, you feel obligated. Now you got two families wanting to invite everybody. I Trust me, they won't be hurt if you don't invite every single person. 
Don't and because they go to enough weddings. They go to right. enough weddings. There's another wedding on a Friday night or a Saturday night. They're, they're happy to be invited, but most people aren't going to have their feelings hurt. I hadn't thought of this, Robin. Do your, mm. Think about your wedding during the week instead of a weekend. That's cheaper during yeah, the week? M most wedding professionals, if you give them a call and, and schedule your wedding for a, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, often it'll be significantly less. They book up on a Friday and a mm. Saturday. They, they want to book up during the week as well. And if you ask them, is, is there any advantage financially for me to do it earlier in the week, most people will. And another thing is a, a floral expert gave me this tip just yesterday. He said a lot of people go out and they start buying things for the wedding, containers, um, things to make the wedding look pretty. Often the wedding professionals, the florist or the reception center already has those items. So don't go out and buy items if they may already have it. You might actually save money by working with a wedding expert versus going out and buying the things thinking that you're going to save money. It's and true. We won't. got married outdoors where there were a mm. lot of flowers already set. So yeah. I, I only had to do beautiful. things on the table, right, rather yeah. than putting things everywhere because yeah. it was already pretty outside. It was already gorgeous. Um, you have a lot more fun tips that we're going to put yeah. on our website. But um, yep. tell everyone why you walk around with a pink folder. Yeah, people ask. How you <laughs> walk around. It is your yeah. color. But well, you know, we all, every time we're on, we say that we want the wedding to be a great experience. It's just one day of the life, you mm -hmm. know, it's just one day. But during the wedding planning process, we want the bride to have peace and the mom to have peace. So we came out with these. These are kind of scrapbook organizers, and you can take this picture out. Bride puts her own wedding announcement or engagement picture in it. But inside, there's tabs that you can keep everything organized. So if you find pictures in a magazine or on our website, you can download them, print them, three ring binder, put them inside of here. Everything stays in one place. We say it's the bride's Bible for her wedding planning during Well, I swear time. then when someone calls you and said, what florist yeah. did you use? Where'd you get the cake? Yeah. You have it all right there. Yeah, all contracts are in there. All business cards are in there. Oh, don't forget to go to brideaccess.com for more information. And by the way, you can watch Bride Access Sundays at 9.30 a.m. right here on ABC4. Robin, thank you. Thank you. You're watching Bride Access. <laughs> Welcome back to Creating Connections. This week I'm here with a guest, Matt from Matthew Ryan Photography. He's here to share a few tips on standing out from the crowd. So tell me Matt, how do you stand out from the crowd? Well I love film and I also love to collect vintage cameras, a few of which I still shoot on are more than 100 years old. Wow, that's amazing. You have a 100-year-old camera. What's a project you're working on right now? Well, I'm shooting unemployed people that have been affected by the economy, and then I'll uh, put the photos together in a book and possibly uh, display them in galleries. So how has this helped your business? Well, I think having something unique that people will remember has really helped me stand out from the other photographers. And I know that our viewers are going to remember you shooting on a 100-year-old camera. Another great example is the TV show you're watching right now, brightaccess.com. They've done an amazing job of being unique in a saturated market. They were the first ones to introduce the online wedding planner. They connect with local artists and sponsor concerts. They produce the pink planner. They showcase interesting wedding stories like Governor Huntsman. They have entertaining hosts that we all know. They showcase wedding giveaways. And one of my favorites is the wedding weather. I mean, I use this one all the time with my clients so I can get an idea of what the weather will be like on their wedding. I'm listing all these things so you can see that there are so many ways that you can be memorable in your market. Another great tip that goes right along this is from the book, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing by Al Rice and Jack Trout. The book says, the most powerful concept in marketing is owning a word in the prospect's mind. So I browsed around brightaccess.com and found vendors that I felt like they owned a word, or at least made it readily apparent when I went to their website. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you a category of a vendor and their word, and let's see if you can guess who it is. Limousine or rental car? Vintage. Something vintage, something blue. Reception center. Italian. Tuscany restaurant. DJ services. Fun. Laughing Gravy. Reception Center. Garden. Red Butte Gardens. Photographer. Photojournalism. Zuma Photo. Reception Center. View. The Tower at Rycycle Stadium. Hotel. Theme Rooms. Anniversary Inn. So the question is, what is the word that you own? And that's your homework for the week, to find out what your word is. Scott Ginsberg from SideRoad.com has a great article on this. I'll put a link to it on my blog. 
So be sure and send your questions to dperry at davidperryfilms.com and your business might just be featured here on brightaccess.com. So Sam, thank you so much for this wonderful ride. I mean, this really is like an ex exquisite ride. I, I don't think I've ever been in a car as, as how you say in America, pimp, as that before. Really, really love it. Now, I wanted to just go, we, we talked a little bit about the car and I was really impressed. Um, tell me a little bit about the car because it's very rare. Right? Definitely is. This is a 1964 Austin Princess Vanden Class. It's actually handmade. It takes four months for a team dedicated to that car to build it by hand. Wow. Wow. There's only 1,500 of those made. This is one of 340 left in the world. Wow. One of them, the only one in Utah, actually. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty rare. That's a very rare car. And I think that's what makes it more beautiful. You know, when you're, when you're having a wonderful occasion, like, you, you know, a wedding or something, you know, it's a one it's a once in a lifetime experience. And so it kind of goes with the car, you know, once in a lifetime experience, not many people get to drive cars it's like that. It's so right? unique, but if I understand right, this isn't your only unique car. Tell us about what else you have with something vintage exactly. or something blue. Yes, I have a 1937 Buick Special, wow. and that's our something blue of the company. Perfect. Oh. And she is uh, one of the most popular she, cars. Does she have a have. name? Her name is Dave. Oh, I love her it. Her name is Princess Ivy. <laughs> and we also have uh, the Rolls Royce, and her name is Iris. It's a Iris. 72 silver shadow, all in oh. white with red interior. It's quite beautiful. So oh, all females. So yeah, no homies. No boys. <laughs> all females. Quite, yeah. But thank you so much. You're welcome. Really, really grateful. And uh, keep you. up the great work and uh, and helping people out here and uh, showing some true class. Thank you, Alex. My Appreciate pleasure. It. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thank, thank you. you. Want to improve your relationship? Think about a small habit your spouse has that irritates you. Got it? Okay, now forget about it. For more tips, expert advice, and resources in your area that can help you learn how to work things out together, visit StrongerMarriage.org. Hi everybody, this is Anne with Anne Elizabeth Custom Design and Printing. Today I'm going to show you a few examples of a program that you can use for your wedding. Now a program is great for a ring ceremony, a ceremony that you are having different people perform and you might want to indicate who is doing what at a ceremony. It's also great to just have an indication of an acknowledgement to family and friends who have traveled to visit you. Uh, you can really incorporate a lot of great things into a program. So I'm going to show you a few. Here we have a great program, and this is actually front and back, but you'll notice here that we have a couple of great things that are incorporated here. You've got a very large bride and groom designed area. Here you have the actual breakdown of what's happening during the, the ceremony itself. So this goes through musical preludes, lighting of candles, all the way through the actual marriage ceremony and what's happening on each step of the way. And then on the back of this program, we have several really nice elements to introduce. We have introducing our bridal party. So this goes through and we have all of the bridal party people. So we have parents of the bride, parents of the groom, we go through bridesmaids, ring bearers, groomsmen, all the way to the officiant. It's really a great indication to all of those people who participated. Over here, I really like this little short, sweet paragraph. This is something heartfelt from the bride and groom thanking their dear family and friends who have traveled to visit them at their wedding day. Let's show you another one. So this is another great program example. This one is going to be a totally different format. You'll notice that this one starts off with a really nice cocoa brown. And as you open this program, you have a very classic layout here. So this includes some of the same elements here. You have the actual rundown of what is happening on the wedding itself. So you have processional, you have remembrance candle, and that lists all of the people in their family who have passed that they want to remember. It's the actual exchange of vows, all the way down to the recessional out of the wedding. The wedding party, again, is listed here. And again, here we have that thank you again, which I think is such an important part. Let's show you a few more. This is such a fun program idea. This is really one of my favorites. 
So, notice the ribbon on here. What are we doing with this? Well, this ribbon hung on each chair, and as each guest sat down at that ceremony, the, the program was already there attached to the chair. Really great detail at any reception or ceremony. Nice monogram at the top, really basic rundown of the ceremony, and you have attendance, a little bit shorter attendant list than some of the others that we've seen. And this is a really great layered invitation with the ribbon, lots of great details on that particular program. Here's another really great program, a little bit bigger size, so a little bit more unusual. Wedding uh, programs and uh, menus and things like that are a great time to use an odd size. So when you're working with your invitation, obviously you're limited to the size of an envelope that you can put into the mail. But when you're not working with having to mail something, you can really go off and you can do something very extreme, long, wide. It can be very off size, which can make for something really unusual at your event. So here's a great example of a program. This actually is a menu here, and so what we've gone through here are hors d'oeuvres, salad, entree, so this would have been placed at each place setting, and each guest has an exact rundown of the whole menu. Now this program, I think, is one of my favorites. Okay, <clears throat> so what you have here, you have, we have two examples here shown of the same program. This whole program is a fan. So this is a midsummer wedding, June 27th, people, outdoors. You hold this program in your hand and you fan yourself away and you are keeping yourself cool, but each one of these little pages tells you about each of the things that is going on. It goes through all of the wedding party, the participants, the actual ceremony itself, all of those important details. So that's five great examples of different programs and what you can really do with them. A variety of styles, everything from short and sweet to very elaborate. So consider a wedding program for your wedding ceremony. Even if you do something that is very short, very sweet, please remember to do the acknowledgement to the family and friends. It's really an important part and it makes them feel like an important part of your wedding. I'm Ann Elizabeth with Ann Elizabeth Design and Printing. Thanks for visiting us. You can see us on our website, annelizabeth.com or on brideaccess.com. Well, thank you so much. This is the end of our episode. Glad that you watched. And we're also grateful for all those people who participated, all the professionals who gave their wonderful pieces of advice and knowledge and wisdom. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to see some more tips and ideas, you can get those at brightaccess.com or the brightaccess.com blog or even the brightaccess.com Facebook page. We'll see you again next week. Brightaccess.com would like to thank our contributors, Culinary Crafts, The Flower Patch, Remember When Film, Studio One Photography, Castle Bridge Films, Anne Elizabeth Invitations, and David Perry Films. The hosts of BrightAccess.com are Alex Boyer and Sarah Parker. BrightAccess.com is brought to you by Utah Central Credit Union. We're in it together.